We're discussing the meaning of life on this program at this time each day. That is, why are we here? What's the purpose of this existence? Uh, why have you ever come into existence? Why are you here? What's the reason for the existence of this planet? And what we have been sharing, as those of you who have been listening for some months know, is that in order to get an answer to cosmic questions as important and big as this, we really have to find someone who is more than a human being. At least someone who has been further than our spacemen have been. Someone who has been beyond the world that we now live in. We say that because the other people, the other religious leaders that we've often listened to, all share the same limitation that we share, a uh, limitation on knowledge. They have never been anywhere but this earth. And so it's very difficult to expect them to have any kind of information that we don't possess ourselves, especially in regard to the purpose of the earth's existence. It just stands to reason that it's very difficult for someone within a system to explain the reason for the existence of that system. And of course, there is only one human being in history that has ever satisfactorily proven that he has left the earth and has come back to it and lived here for more than a month and then disappeared again, going back, as he said, to the presence of the maker that created the earth in the first place, and that is that man known as Jesus of Nazareth. And you know that we've been talking about the explanations that he gave about our life here on earth. And one of the basic statements he made was, whatever is born of the flesh is flesh. And that is, uh, what you've inherited from your dad and mum is just flesh. And it's going to die in 70 to 90 to maybe at the most 100 years, and it cannot ever inherit anything more than what is flesh. And, of course, we know that to our cost as we've watched our friends and our relatives die. We know fine well that we ourselves are going to die someday. And yet it is interesting, isn't it, that we keep on trying to produce in this created life some of the attributes that we feel we were made for. We try to produce the sense of stability and security uh, through having enough possessions or money or stocks and shares or pension schemes that we will be able to feel protected from the insecurity and the instability that is around us. And that is because we feel we were made for that, don't we? We feel somehow we were made for the security and stability of heaven. And yet, it doesn't matter how hard we try, we never seem able to get to that point, even if we are a Rockefeller. We never seem able to get to that point where we feel absolutely safe and absolutely secure. Indeed, many of us look back to our childhood days, as Wordsworth did, the English poet, and we think heaven lies about us in our infancy. Shades of the prison house begin to close around the growing boy. At length the man perceives it die away and fade into the light of common day. And it seems that we lose the security and stability that we used to have when we were little five-year-olds, knowing for sure that our mum or dad would supply our lunch for us every day. It seems impossible to get back to that degree of stability and security. And what Jesus explained to us was, of course, that we never could get that security and stability from things and from this earth and what it produces. We just can't. And we know we can't, actually. It doesn't matter how hard we try, we never get free completely from angst, from anxiety. Quite apart from the fear of the mushroom cloud, which seems at the moment to be receding a little with the arms control agreements that are possible, we never seem to get rid of the angst that is connected up with fears of depression, fears of the general strike days, fears of not having enough food to eat. We never seem able to get absolutely free 
of that sense of insecurity. It seems indeed that the insecurity is not just satisfied by a provision of things or a guarantee of money. It seems that the security and stability that we thought we could get if we had enough material possessions is something more ephemeral than that and something deeper and more heartfelt than that. And so we don't really know what to do, most of us. We have simply committed ourselves to living in this fearfulness and this half uncertainty and this insecurity for the rest of our lives. Jesus, of course, explained to us that the reason we cannot satisfy this security is that it was put there by the person that made us. And it is so big and is so realistic in its definition that it can only be met by an infinite person with infinite resources. And that that is the person that has made us. That he is, in fact, a kindly creator. That he has not put us here to fend for ourselves. That he has not stuck us like little flies on this globe that flashes through space at hundreds of miles an hour. He has, in fact, continued to overlook us and oversee us. And he actually does know what you're doing, and he knows what your needs are. And this is what Jesus said to us. He said, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor about your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubit to a span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O men of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Let the day's own trouble be sufficient for the day. In other words, this man Jesus told us that the creator of the world who made us, who is his own personal father, is also our father and that he knows you, and he knows what your needs are, and that he will provide those needs for you. And he may provide them for you as you work at your normal job. And he may provide them for you at times through wages or salary, but actually you know yourself. And there have often been times in your life when job has failed, money has failed, everything has failed, and yet here you are, here you are, amazing that it is. Here you are, you when things absolutely fell apart, still somehow or other, you got what you needed. You may say, oh, well, it was by the strength of my own right arm, but you know there were many times in your life when you had no strength in your right arm and you weren't able to get what you needed, and yet somehow or other it was supplied. That's what Jesus is saying. Look, stop looking to things for your security. You'll never get enough things to get you the security that you need. But your Father, who created you, he knows that you need them, and he'll be faithful. Look to him and start depending on him.